everybody. This is Francesco Abruzzino with the Uncensored Report. Ebola. Ebola. That's what we're talking about today. Um, I'll cover the uh, GIF that you see at the bottom. Uh, what is it? My right side of my screen, I guess. And I'll cover that in just a second. But there's, uh, according to Al Jazeera, there's seven new suspected cases of Ebola. This just came out, what, about four hours ago. It brings the cases up to 57 in the outbreak. 12 have died. Nine have, um, if you want to call it, been cured or stopped or put in check. And there's uh, obviously a lot more out there that are in limbo, you know, if you because if you take 12 plus 9, what's that come to? Come on, quick math, 21. Uh, you still have several cases out there if, if there's a total of 57 that are in limbo and they don't know if they will be uh, cured, if, there's, if you want to call it a cure, or if they'll end up dying. And so they're coming out. The, and the reason I'm covering this, folks, is I covered this a couple years ago. When the when the Ebola first came out, and I was covering with a lot of alternative media, was covering it. MSM was ignoring it. You would see something every once in a while. I think um, they didn't really start covering it until months into it. And the next thing you know, it's here in the United States. And one thing I try to do with the Uncensored Report is bring up issues that aren't being covered by the MSM, which is pretty easy because they stick to the same playbook. Um, but back to this case, what they're trying, the, there's a lot of concern because this virus is in a urban sit setting now. Before it was primarily in rural, they could try to control it. People were spread out, small uh, population zones, easier to control. But now it's in a city of, I'm going to try to pronounce this, Mubandaka, and that's over in Congo. And there's a population over a million people. So it's beginning to look a lot scarier. People are starting to get concerned. So they're going to some alternative um, experimental drugs. And they got an Ebola vaccine that they're going to try there to try to mitigate the spread of the virus. And if you don't know what Ebola is, basically it starts like a flu-like disease and is followed up by uh, bloody diarrhea, vomiting. Um, a few days later, they'll start bleeding through the eyes, their nose, their mouth, Um Depending on the strain, the individuals may or may not die. Um, it's got, I think, up to 90% of the people that get it end up dying in many cases. It's spread through uh, direct contact uh, via blood or secretion. Um, you know, is there a cure or not a cure? I don't know. Some people say it is a cure because we have some people here in the United States that it's gone. It seems to be a cure with the drugs that are being used. Some people are saying, is it really cured? Because they had another one of those individuals, I believe it was only one here in the United States where it seemed cure, but then um, some of the characteristics came back. So is it just being put in check is a concern. So they got this vaccine out there because it's in this urban setting now and they're trying to prevent a major urban breakout, which could be devastating stating to the country of Congo and, and the surrounding cities, surrounding countries, and to us here in the United States. Um, if you look at, there was an article, I think it's Zero Hedge, where they put out about um, last weekend, they had some three people that had the Ebola. So their family members decided to break them out of the quarantine area. Um, they took them to a prayer meeting, and at this prayer meeting, there was about 50 people. And Unfortunately, what happened is people at the prayer meeting were exposed, obviously. Two of the patients were basically rounded up, and the um, they were in the infectious disease stage where they were doing the diarrhea, vomiting, and everything like that. Um, the third person, or two, two of the three are now dead. Um, the third one was returned to the quarantine area. Now the question is, what will happen to those other 50 people that were at the meeting? Um, they don't know just yet, and I don't think there's been an update on that. I remember reading it, and I haven't seen any updates on it. I don't know if there will be any updates on it. So the question is, is could the Ebola outbreak spread to Europe and to the United States? And that's where that little map comes up that you see on the screen. It's a GIF that was created by Flirt, and basically... They're looking at if a person gets Ebola in a heavy populated urban area such as um, Mudwanaka, I can't pronounce it, and could it spread? Um, should people start paying attention? And they say, yeah, um, Kinshasa is a major transportation pub. 
So FLIRT, this flight risk tracker that you see on the screen right here that I'm looking at, has um, takes a look at how this virus could spread. Um, they use the flight data um, from air, airports from the Mubandaka in Kensha and Brazil and all these different places there to predict the risk of the infection where it could go. And some of the major areas, you know, there's areas like Ethiopia, Con Congo, uh, South Africa, South Africa, Johannesburg, which is pretty populated. Paris, France, Brussels, Belgium are all key countries that could be connected. From there, Morocco. From there, we all know how easy it would be to have Americans pick up the virus and bring it back here. So it's not um, far-fetched to see how the outbreak could hit Europe and it could come here to the United States. Eco Alliance Re Alliance report put out that the analysis um, ranks the United States as the 17th on that list. 17th most susceptible country on that list of getting outgoing passengers. And they said that because um, the Congo, Congonese, tend to and people that were within that flight, that flirt route, tend to go to New York. I think it was 0.13%, um, Miami 0.11%, Atlanta. And they did this whole breakdown of all the cities and how it only takes one person, one sick person on a flight to get a global pandemic. You might think, oh, so someone comes here, there was a risk getting tech, right? One person infects another person, infects another person, you got a pandemic. Um, the last time Ebola reached our shores, we were lucky. We, you know, we basically um, took care of it. But how we got to that point is a little concerning because you would have one patient come in and the hospitals were totally unprepared for it. The entire hospital was essentially overwhelmed with these individuals. Could you imagine if it's more than one in an area? If it's thousands, how are we going to handle that? Especially with an Ebola virus that has a death rate of 90%. Um, this is a deadly disease and it has come to the United States and it could come to the United States again. And I believe the last time it came to the United States, and, and I could be wrong, I be believe it was basically contained in rural areas. Now it's in an urban area. And obviously, the quarantine area isn't too secure if you have people that are able to escape, like those three. Two that are already dead because they were at um, extreme level in that whole, they were at the diarrhea, bloody diarrhea stage. And that's why more attention needs to be paid to it. That's why I tend to put these stories out because MSM doesn't cover it. A lot of people say, oh, you're scaring. You're, it's a scare. You're going to scare people. It's a scare tactic. You shouldn't do that. Is it? Or is it trying to face reality? I'm trying to let people know that stuff is happening out there that we should be concerned about. You know, I don't, I, right now, most people listen to propaganda, the MSM. Are they being prepared? Is the CDC going out and telling the hospitals, hey, this is breaking in the Congo? Nah, I think most health professionals are aware of it, but what action is being taken? So to me, it's concerning. Um... I and mean, that's just one of many viruses that can make their way here. All right, so we'll say you guys. This has been Francesco Aprozzino with the Uncensored Report. Mm -hmm.